I lent you a dollar yesterday. Oh, well, can I borrow a dollar? For what? So I can pay back the dollar I owe you. You're getting to be a hustler, Bernie. Hey, look. Oh, uh, that must be those kids from Driscoll High. Yeah, it must be awful to lose your school on account of an earthquake. And wouldn't you know it? More guys than girls. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, what are the teachers like here? Hard as nails. And watch out for the principal even beats up parents. It's just like our school. Hey, kid, what'd you get your letter in? Football. I play tackle. Come in. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Well, if I live through today, I'll let you know tomorrow. 87 transfers and no two schedules alike. Would you like me to send Miss Hogarth in to help you? No, I can manage. I wish they'd given me a week to get ready. That earthquake was very inconsiderate. Any problem, kids? Nothing unusual, but I haven't had time to take a really close look. It was tough on those kids to get split up and sent to different schools. I'd like us to make them as welcome as possible. Yeah, you know, they're gonna feel really funny changing sides and cheering for our teams. I never thought about that part. Might have some very educational benefits. Like what? Well, it teaches flexibility. Some of them may want to become politicians. Sorry, man, you and my seat. Who would you expect me to do, Stan? See, we're still short a few desks. You got enough desks, Mr. Dixon. You just got too many dudes. What's your name? Me? Marvin Jacoby. Well, Marvin, you and Jason go down to the custodian's office and pick up some folding chairs. Hey, how's this look to you, Mr. Omer? Well, that's much better. Well, do you think we really have a chance of winning this race for Whitney, Mr. Omer? I hope so. $5,000 worth of shop equipment is a prize I'd like to see Whitman get. Yeah, and that's about 5,000 more than we got now. I, I wish it was a speed race instead of who gets the most miles per gallon. Anybody can drive fast, Ronald. It's important today to slow up, save gas and energy. That's why the companies are loaning these cars to the schools. That's it. That, that, yeah, seem pretty good. Mm -hmm. Hey, you can look, but don't touch. Fingerprints add weight. We were working on a car for the race exactly like this over at Driscoll. Hey, it might have looked the same, but this one will run a lot better. I doubt it. Marvin's Mr. Supertune himself. No kidding. Bernie can't even sing, but he makes music with engines. Hey, what school are you racing against first? Ogden. <laughs> They'll slaughter you. That school has an auto shop that looks like General Motors. It's not what you got, it's what you do with it. <laughs> I'm Mr. Omer, your shop instructor. You boys want to work in a race? Uh, no, thanks. We don't want to work with losers. Losers? That's right. Driscoll licked Whitman in football, baseball, basketball, and track. Not ping pong. We don't play ping pong. Well, when you learn how to play, come around. Yeah. Most of you did pretty well on the essays. Now, I admit, the energy crisis is not a lyrical subject. But you had a tendency to be too literal. And, Sandra, I wasn't able to find yours. Well, I didn't turn one in, Miss Johnson. Why not? I'm an Aquarius. I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> what does that have to do with the assignment? I can't work that way, Miss Johnson. I may stay up all night and really feel like writing. Other times, I can't. You can't? Uh-uh. There's no point in going against my nature. By the end of the year, I'll have everything turned in. When you were at Driscoll, did you do this in all your classes? Just English. That's my best subject. Well, in that case, I'm going to be more than anxious to see your work. I'd like you to turn your essay in tomorrow. Well, I'll let you know. Tomorrow? What can I do for you, boys? Well, it's this way. We were working on a car at Driscoll to enter in the MPG race. We had it running lean and clean and doing 86 at 5400. You dig, Mr. Kaufman? 86 horsepower at 5,400 RPMs, right? He digs. We hate to see all our work get lost, so we were hoping you could have the car transferred over here to Whitman. But we already have a car here that the boys have been working on for some time. We were working on our car for weeks, too, sir. Boys, I know how you feel, but only one car from each school can enter the competition. We know that. 
Look, we're not saying anything against the guys who are working on the Whitman car, but we feel that the car we've been working on has a much better chance of winning. For Whitman. I'm not sure the other boys would agree with you. Well, there's one way we can prove it. We'll test our car against theirs, and the best gets to represent the school. Maybe it's only fair. I mean, they did put a lot of work in on that car, Driscoll. Yes, they did. And this way, maybe everybody would be willing to get behind the winning car. And push it if it runs out of gas. Oh, you know what I mean. Well, I have to see if uh, the dealer who's sponsoring the race would be willing to transfer their car over here. And then they'd have to find a faculty member willing to be responsible for their project. Well, what about Mr. Ulmer? Oh, I couldn't ask him to sponsor both cars. It'd take too much of his time. Mm -hmm. They'd have to find somebody else. Hi, Mr. Dixon. How do you feel, Mr. Dixon? Oh, fine. Um, we were just passing, and we heard you're a pretty good guy. It's just a rumor. What's on your minds? We could ask any teacher, Mr. Dixon, but we thought you'd like to be the first to be asked. Don't con me, Marvin. We need a sponsor for the MPG race. I thought Mr. Elmer was sponsoring the car. Not that car. Our car. Mr. Kaufman said he'd get the car from our old school if you'll sponsor us. Mr. Kaufman said that? He didn't say you in particular. We heard you're a pretty good guy. You already said that, Henry. Look, how about it, Mr. Dixon? It won't take up much of your time. How much? Would you go for two or three hours and maybe a Saturday? I have a feeling I'm going for a lot more than that. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mr. Dixon. You're a pretty good guy. Get out of here. I hear a loud noise. That's your brain rattling. Okay, kill it. Hey, Marvin. You might as well give up now. I mean, even if you get it right, Bernie's a better driver. I can squeeze two or three more miles per gallon out of any car. Well, once Bernie went 50 miles with just one gallon. You put me on. No jive, man. He carried the gala with him on the bus. <laughs> I really don't know what to do. Sandra hasn't turned in any of her work. But what kind of excuse does she give? She's an Aquarius, the water bearer. Maybe she's waiting for high tide. <laughs> I don't know. But I just don't want to hurt her creativity. If she hasn't done any work, how do you know she has any? Well, I talked to one of her teachers at Driscoll who happens to think she might be the next Colette. Oh, you want me to talk to Sandra? No, no, I'll handle it. But I just have to decide how. You know, actually, it's not fair to put everyone in the same mold. Well, that may be true, but you're not giving a private lesson. You're teaching a class. There has to be some discipline. Yeah, but psychologically, I don't want to turn her off. Gifted people need some freedom, if they're gifted. And what about your freedom? What about it? If Sandra waits till the end to hand in all of her work, there you'll be on the last day of school going over her whole semester's work. You're right. That's a rough running in. Pull the carburetor. I pulled the carburetor six times. I'm sick of pulling the carburetor. Well, something screwy ran okay yesterday. Wait a minute. Would you look at that? Let me see. Dirt. Dirt in the fuel pump. Oh, I bet I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see this? What the fuck in you? Somebody put dirt in our tank. Are you accusing me? Well, it didn't get there by itself. We wouldn't have to do something like that to beat you. It's the only way you could. Crazy nuts. <laughs> Get back, get back. You guys stand back, too. This is an awful mess. Yes, it is. We cannot have this kind of stuff around here. Sorry, Mr. Dixon. I was sorry about the dirt. Well, luckily, they didn't set fire to the whole shop. There was no danger of that. Too many people around. Right. Who might have gotten hurt. What are you going to do? I am canceling Whitman out of the competition. 
for the safety of everyone concerned and also as a little lesson in the meaning of competition. Why not teach them a lesson in cooperation? How? Make them work together on one car. That's all they could get ready in time for the race anyway. Do you think they would work together? There's only one way to find out. All right, on one condition. What's that? Mr. Ulmer can take charge of the cars, but you take charge of the kids. How come it always works out that way? Can't understand it. Hi, Miss Johnson. Oh, hi, Sandra. You got my note. No, so I just had a feeling you wanted to talk to me. Well, what a coincidence. Not really. Aquarians are very intuitive. Uh-huh. Well, um, Sandra, you got an A on this exam, and your classwork is very good. It's easy. But you're an essay and two book reports behind. Do you think you could have them in by next week? Who knows? You know, Miss Johnson, I bet you're a Capricorn, always wanting things done exactly the same way. Sorry, I'm a Gemini. Oh, then I want you to have this. It's an osprey feather. Well, thanks. But I'd rather have a book report. You mean Mr. Kaufman's gonna let us enter only one car in the competition? That's all you could have entered anyway. But we can only do it now if we all work on it together. Without any hassles. Any more trouble, and that's it. I think Mr. Kaufman's made us an offer we can't refuse. Yeah. And when you get an offer you can refuse, you can refuse. <laughs> Do you have an aspirin? Sandra Hollett. Sandra Hollett. What'd she do this time? The usual, nothing. What was she supposed to do? An essay. I suggested famous Aquarians as a topic because she's into all that, you know? You know, I think you're attacking the symptoms, not the cause. You lost me. Clobber! Oh, Liz. Figuratively speaking. Yeah, well, to me, the real meaning of teaching is not to knock knowledge into somebody's head, it's to inspire them. Anyhow, that approach will never work with Sandra. Why? Because she's tougher than I am. <laughs> Can we drive the car over to Turner's garage during our lunch period? Well, what's wrong with it? Well, you see, we don't have an exhaust gas analyzer in the shop. Yeah, Turner said he let us use his. We have to check the air-fuel ratio. All right, we'll get back before class starts. Hey, great. Thanks, Mr. Dixon. Okay. Well, looks like the boys are getting along all right. They're better. Oh, the first elimination race is Friday after school. Now, that's just between two cars, right? Ours and the one from Ogden High. Great. That gives Whitman a 50-50 chance. <laughs> and so the range of Mr. Mom's talent is enormous when you consider that he not only wrote The Razor's Edge, but also... Used it. <laughs> Hi. Do you have a late pass? They were out of it. Okay. What about today's assignment? This isn't what I assigned. I didn't feel like doing all that dull stuff, Miss Johnson. Okay, we'll talk about it after class. Where are you going? I just came to pick up my books. I feel bored today, Miss Johnson. Well, if you feel bored, maybe you need some psychological counseling. Why? Because a short attention span is usually found in very young children. Healthy minds are not easily bored. Sit down. What? I said sit down. Why? Because I said so. I don't want to. I said sit. All right. If any of you have a special problem, I'll be glad to listen. But completing the year's work is a rule, not an exception for everybody, from now on forever. Is that clear? Yes, Miss Johnson.
Class dismissed. Who's going to drive, Bernie or Marvin? Bernie, they took the coin. they're saving the gas for the race. The car that goes farthest before it runs out of gas wins the race. gives us the psychological advantage, right? I hope the car knows that. left in the lines for a few more laps. Look, they're gonna be conking out any minute anyway. I don't think this will ever replace the Indianapolis 500. Well, it may not be fast, but it's safer. Well, I think the greatest thing is that Driscoll and Whitman kids did it together. That's yeah, right. yeah. Well, Pete, now that it's over, your time will be your own again. What do you mean it's over? Next week, they raise Horace Greeley. And if they win that one, there's a lot more. You mean you're going to be tied up after school every day? Well, I did agree to be faculty advisor. Did you expect to win? Well, sometimes you have to take the bitter with the sweet. Excuse me, folks. There's my car over there. Bye. Bye-bye. 
You know, Alice, I've been thinking about Sandra Holler. Oh, it's all right. I'm handling it. Well, maybe that advice I gave you was a little strong, especially about the heavy discipline. Oh, no, don't worry about it. As a matter of fact, Sandra turned in an A paper. On the subject you assigned? Yeah, didn't deviate an inch. And she used her imagination beautifully. Well, that's marvelous. How'd you straighten her out? Well, well I have my methods. Actually, I clobbered her. <laughs> ¶¶